in the furnace to get glass. It is a gather. It's called a gather. This will be a two gather item for me on the blowpipe. The blowpipe is a hollow stainless steel tube with an enlarged area on the end where we gather the glass. The temperature inside the furnace is oh, about 2200 degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit. I can literally feel that. And when this tank is full, it holds 200 pounds of molten glass. What Frank's going to do is get the end of his rod hot. He's going to go in and dip into this, and he's going to get his first gather of glass. And when we come out, it's a little bit too hot to work with, so he'll either roll it in that block, which is a marbling block, or across that table, which is a tool called a marber, to cool it down and give it a basic shape. Once he gets it cooled down, he'll put a puff of air into this and it will become hollow. Once it becomes hollow, it's then known as a parasol. He'll probably take this and walk it around and let you take a look at it up close and personal because he needs to let this cool down sufficiently before he gets his next gather. If you don't let this happen, what's going to happen is when you go in and you turn the rod in the hot glass, the friction would twist this bubble off and you'd have to start all over. Avoid the urge to reach out and touch that. That's an experience you probably never forget. In all the years that we've been doing this, folks, we have never been burned by hot glass. And neither has the public. So let's not start today. As long as that glass is moving, it's about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now when he goes in for his next gather, he'll have a lot more than he had the first time because he has a larger surface area to gather on. When he comes out this time, he'll go directly into the marbling block. It does the same thing as the marble table, only it accommodates a larger bit of glass. And then he's going to let this sit and cool a bit, and then we're going to apply two colors to this, so I'm going to have to leave the mic um, so that I can heat these to make them workable for his piece. We can only work with one color glass in the furnace at a time, and we're working with a light blue. So we're going to add two bits to this, and one of them is white and one of them is orange. And he's going to do them in two different directions. Uh, and as he turning the pipe on this, uh, some of you folks might become a little dizzy. Jimmy's going to go get a uh, a rod that already has a bit on it. He's going to start out with the opal bit, which is, it looks white, um, and it is white when it uh, cools down. And he's going to bring the pipe with the opal bit on it over to Frank. And Frank is going to take the rod, he's going to touch that opal bit to the body of his piece here, and then he's going to roll away, and that's going to pull a strand of that opal glass off and wrap around the body of his piece. So, as soon as Jimmy gets it uh, hot enough, he'll go over to the marbling table and he'll shape it so it has a point to it. And then he'll bring it to uh, Frank, who will then go ahead and uh, touch it to the piece, roll away, and it will pull right off, just like bubble gum if you pulled it, uh, stuck it to something and pulled it. So comes over, Frank grabs it, attaches it, rolls it away, and then we'll take his shears, box shears cut from four different directions. Frank goes back into the furnace to uh, fuse on the body of the piece. And Jim's going to go get the other rod with the other color. What's is that a, the orange? Yes. So, so now we really have a challenge because Frank is working in reverse and is going to crisscross the uh, the strand of opal thread with this orange colored bit, which means working in reverse from what he normally does. So Frank has done a couple of these. 
The second one he did was just an outstanding mug. When we finish this piece, it's going to go into that silver box on the end of the uh, flatbed trailer. Here he grabs it, he's put it down. There he goes, wrapping it around, wrapping it around, crisscross, gets to the bottom of the piece, and cuts it. And it's difficult because he is using his left hand to manipulate the box shears. And he's going to go back in and heat this so that it becomes one piece of glass and then <clears throat> he's going to use a tool called jacks to cut down a line just off the head of the blowpipe and it'll be used later on when it comes time to remove this and work on the top of the piece. Most pieces that you make you work on the bottom and the body first then you crack the blowpipe away and work on the top. This is an all-volunteer operation. We represent Wheaton Arts from Millville, New Jersey. It's about three and a half hours south of here. After the presentation, if anybody has any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them for you. And we also encourage you to stop by our sales table because it's your participation there that helps keep us going glass. We'd like to thank the fair for sponsoring our propane and lodging because without their sponsorship, we would definitely not be able to be here. This is a very expensive operation in order to be us for us to be here to blow glass last Friday. This whole process was started the Monday before. And we burn approximately 40, 40 gallons of propane a day. Now he's gonna make a drinking vessel out of this. So what he's gonna do is expand this. And at some point in time, we're gonna put a handle on it basically glass of silica sand, soda ash, limestone, and metallic oxide added for color. And we're working with a light blue this weekend. Normally we start with the, uh, with the raw materials, but we're not doing that uh, this particular weekend. We're using previously melted glass, which is known as color. And the reason for that is because uh, we didn't have the batch, which is the raw materials available to us, and we had already made the commitment to do this show. When he swung that, he was using centrifugal force to, for the piece to get a little bit longer. And when you do this, you have to be very careful because once hot glass starts to move, it can go all of a sudden. And you can go from a six inch piece to a two foot piece in a heartbeat if you're not careful. Redefining that cut down because this is where the piece has to come off. And then at some point in time, he'll chill the sides of this piece because he's going to flatten the bottom, and he doesn't he doesn't want that to move.